What's going on everybody? Your boy Juan Valdez back with a brand new video and today I wanted to go over how you guys can increase your Shopify store sales without spending any more money. Now, uh, some of the things I'm gonna go over in this video aren't things that are originated by me. Uh, some of the things I am already doing in my business, so they do already help. There are things that I've currently implemented, but they're also gonna be, there's also gonna be some things I'm gonna go over that I'm planning on now implementing. Uh, some things that I actually learned from some marketing geniuses. Uh, I've actually been reading this book called The Mr. X Book. Um, it's actually by Jay Abraham, and it's actually not an easy book to get your hands on. Luckily, my business partner Samir and I are part of the Two Comma Club X program that ClickFunnels has uh, by Russell Brunson. And this book is actually uh, a forward, well, it has a forward by Russell Brunson as well. And honestly, for those of you guys that don't know who Jay Abraham is, this dude is an absolute legend. He has advised over a hundred different companies in different industries and has helped them all increase their revenue with some of the marketing strategies that he implements and helps them out with. So uh, he covers a lot of different things. I'll probably make, you know, obviously this is a huge book and there's a lot that they're covering. So I'll probably make more than one video going over some of the things I learned from him. But in this one specifically, I wanted to go over how you can utilize your customer base that you already have to increase your Shopify store sales. So uh, let me just move this here. Uh, if you see me looking away, no, I actually have some things that I actually wrote down from the book. I usually, when I read, I take notes on them. And so I just wanted to make sure I covered everything here, but we'll just get right into it. So when it comes down to um, running an e-commerce business, your customers are your biggest asset. You guys probably may have already heard this before, but it's something that, you know, you if you didn't already, you should know. And you know, it's super important on really understanding like what your customers are worth to you, right? In your business. And so you want to make sure that, you know, obviously you start to learn to understand how you can calculate like how much a customer is actually worth to you because then it's it's super important to know that later on. And we'll kind of get right into that. We'll come on, I'll cover that as well. I don't want to confuse you guys, but uh, one of the first things you know, obviously since your customers are your greatest asset, you wanna make sure that you guys are really focusing on establishing good and solid customer relationships, right? With every single customer. And one of the ways you can do that is, you know, simply having a communication, more than one form of communication with your customers. So for example, one of the things I like to do in my business is I like to have customized emails to go out as soon as a customer buys from you know any of our stores or our businesses, right? And this customized email, it's usually you know something uh, I like to have something like funny in this email, but also showing gratitude and you know really showing appreciation for the customer's business. And for me, that has helped me a ton because after that email, I usually gets good replies and it just really um, starts to really show the customer that you know you really appreciate them and that they're not just buying from like a random store because people like feeling connected to who they buy from right and that's huge and we're going to talk about this why it's important later on as well but uh, that's one of the things i personally do you guys can also do the same thing as well start rather than just having that regular confirmation email that's going out to your customers when they buy have an additional email going out or edit that email you know really saying thank you and appreciating the customer for their business it doesn't have to be anything crazy just something simple really just thanking them again from buying from you and having that trust because again you know they could have other options that they could have they, they could have had other people they could have purchased that same product or item for but they went with you so you want to make sure you actually show appreciation for that now one of the next ways that you can start to build, you know, good customer relationships is by really keeping in touch, right? Either email, Facebook Messenger, any forms of communication. You want to make sure that you're staying in touch with your customers. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want to get your customers in the habit of hearing from you, right? Opening up your emails, opening up your Facebook messages. If you're cold calling, some of you guys may not be doing that, but you know, getting used to picking up your phone calls and that helps out of course with customer relationships because it shows that you care for the customer obviously you're you know you're showing uh, multiple points of communication and reaching out to them and follow up and all that great stuff that's something that i learned from sales that is huge but it also it gets them again you see your communication and that's going to be huge make sure you guys stay to the end of this video you'll definitely understand why you know getting your customers used to your communication is you know really going to be important for your business now um you guys can 
these are when, when it comes to the actual like the actual nitty gritty of like thanking your customers and staying in touch by email well these that, that's more of like on the back end of things um, this video is probably gonna be for a lot of you guys that already have customers um, existing customers already have customers coming in um, not too much for like beginners but you want to set these systems up for all the customers or any new customers you have coming through the door or even existing customers because this is something you want to start doing right away and it's something that's going to build up it kind of com compound as time goes on but you want to make sure you do this before you know before trying to sell your customer again and what i mean by that is if you have any new customers or existing customers before really trying to sell them more products or more uh things that you have to offer really try to establish that relationship first because people know that usually when they buy you know they know they they're usually expecting to get hammered with like other promotions uh more offers and things like that from anyone they buy from and they know that it, you know they they kind of just when that happens and when they just get hit with all these different promotions and offers and ads, well, they kind of already are expecting that to happen because that's what happened with everybody else. But when you do that shift and when you really focus on really just communicating with the customer, showing appreciation after they buy that first time, it gets a lot easier for you to remarket and resell to that customer. And that's something that Jay was really big on. But it's super important you try to do that again, like I said, before you try to upsell uh, your customers so usually what i like to do for my e-commerce stores is i like to have different email sequences in place for example i have a uh an email sequence for first time buyers this email sequence for first time buyers uh mainly again thanks them for their business that's a really focus on it it really focuses on selling them on um our brand and why they actually purchase from us so some type of like content email a little bit of background story things like that and um you know, none of the emails that are in that sequence are sales emails, right? Because I want to make sure that they get hit with all these emails first before I actually sell them anything. I want them to really realize that I'm showing them appreciation and appreciate their business before I even get into any kind of promotions. Don't worry. When it comes down to sending promotion emails and selling customers and remarketing to them, you're going to have plenty of time for that. That's always going to be there. Building that relationship is something that's super important, especially when somebody first buys from you, right? Because that's like when the, the lead is like still there and when they're hot and you want to make sure again you establish that relationship right away so doing these things builds rapport with the customer and again get some use to your communication and that's going to be huge because building rapport will lead to customers referring other people to your you know your website and your business so other people to buy from you which word of mouth is the best kind of business that's something else that jay is huge on right really focusing on building that word of mouth because with word of mouth business any kind of referrals or anything like that there's no extra advertising cost that you have on there it's like if somebody tells somebody else and by the way, word of mouth advertising is like the most powerful form of advertising. If you guys ever thought about, you know, something one time that you bought something from somebody else because somebody told you to, well, that's the same example with other people, right? They do the same thing. And so um, building rapport um, is going to be huge because it's going to allow people to actually feel more comfortable referring you to other people. And it's going to allow customers to feel more open, leaving reviews either on your social media pages, on your product pages, and just leaving reviews for you overall, which is a win-win because obviously you can use reviews and obviously they feel comfortable leaving a review for you. So uh, that's, that means that they're already getting used to, again, that communication and having just that good relationship between, you know, you but they're both you guys, just to be a good relationship, not to confuse you. I thought I almost, I had something written down here, so it kind of threw me off a little bit. It's a win-win. It's, it's a win-win for both the customer and you, hands down. And so, now, getting customers used to opening your emails and used to your communication is huge because the real money is made on the back end. So that's why you want to understand how much customers are worth for you. There was well, different reasons why you want to understand like how much a customer is worth to you. Really because once you wrap your head around, well, you know, a customer costs me $10 to acquire, but then I know that I, through the back end and the upsells and downsells and the back end systems that I have in place, I can generate usually an average of an extra $20. Well, now that you know that a customer costs you $10, but you're making an extra $20 in the back end, you can afford to pay up to $30 for that customer to still break even, right? But that's how you kind of have to know how much a customer is actually worth to you. And that's a little more complicated than just that, but that was just a quick example. But 
you want to get them get customers used to opening your emails and get used to your communication that way you can actually funnel them through your back end right there's no point even having a back end system if the customers that you're bringing in aren't going to be opening your emails aren't going to be um, really responding to your promotions and things like that and so you want to make sure that you focus on you know getting your customers used to your communication that's just super important and so the reason why the real money is on the back end. I know I have a few different videos talking about back end systems and things like that, but I want to make sure you guys understand. Uh, the reason why the money is made on the back end is because once somebody buys from you, it's much easier to get them to buy from you again, right? That's just how it goes. Um, they already have that trust and they've already committed to buying from you, so it's a lot easier for them to you know, take advantage of any other offers or promotions you have to offer. So usually you want to have, uh, you know, when you bring a customer in, they buy from you, you usually want to have upsells and downsells in place right away. But after that, again, you want to have a little bit of a gap after they buy from you, kind of establish that relationship through email marketing or, you know, Facebook marketing, messenger marketing, wh whichever forms of communications you have in place. And then after that, again, you want to then transition to have them on to, you know, um, promotions and offer sequences as well. You know, use your communication is so you can continuously remarket to them right because now if you bring in a customer and that customer costs you know let's use the same example ten dollars per purchase uh, or ten dollars to acquire that customer right it costed you ten dollars on facebook or google or any advertising platform to get that customer through the door and now you brought them in and you have these uh these um you know, you have these sequences in place, right? So we have different email sequences in place after a customer has bought a specific product. Um, uh, after a certain time frame, we then offer them, you know, another product, right? Usually a congruent upsell. And so um, I know that we have statistics and usually like three out of every 10 customers ends up buying our upsells that we have in place. And so we know that we can actually still afford to pay those $10 to acquire every single customer. So it's not a problem if it gets more, a little bit more expensive to you know acquire customers because we know we're still gonna make money on the back end. But that's just, again, one aspect of it. That's one of the benefits of having your customers used to your communications that you can continuously remarket to them, right? Not only can you remarket to them through like different email sequences you have in place, but whenever you do broadcast emails, you know, they're gonna be right, they're gonna open your emails right away and they're gonna be, you know, a lot more comfortable opening your emails because they know that you're not always trying to sell them things, right? But that's why it's important to build that relationship up front. So uh, that's another benefit of having your customers having your customers used to your communication. Another benefit is you'll be able to test products with your email list for free. And that's important because if you can take any product you're planning on testing and you don't have to run a $5 Facebook ad for it, you can just send it out to your email list well and see the results from it right on your email list because usually when we test products on our email list, we see purchases right away. Not all the time, but usually if it's congruent products, products that we research thoroughly, you know, we see which ones that are doing better than others. And we're able to literally test out products on our email list for free. But that's all a route from the benefit of having that relationship with your customers that you either have or you're bringing in. So uh, that's another benefit of that as well. Now you wanna make sure that you know, you're, you're utilizing and you can do these things like building relationships, building rapport and having your customers use the communication by just setting up uh, email sequences, right? Uh, usually there's different, a few different ones, but uh, you want to have a few different kinds of emails going out in general, uh, apart from just um, email sequences. Like, of course, you can have a new customer sequence where, again, uh, the focus is on really um, appreciating their business and, you know, showing thanks for them buying from you and things like that. You can then have... Uh, repeat buyer emails like you know when you somebody that buys from you more than once you can have specific emails going out to them so there's a lot of different emails you have going out but basically it comes down to having core these core specific emails that's, that's going out to your customers right you want to have relationship building emails which is literally just emails not trying to sell anything just trying to really uh, have that relationship with your customer another email that we have going out is like uh, after a certain date i believe it's like a month or so after um, the customer orders a product, they automatically get an email checking in to see how the product is, right? Getting feedback on the product and how the whole process was. That's what we call just a relationship building email, right? Because we're not trying to sell anything. You also want to have content emails, right? Content emails is pretty simple. You can have, um, you know, emails going on, showing them, talking about different benefits of using the specific product that you emailed out, right? And sending out these emails, or well, before that, 
And the last kind of emails you can also have is upsell and cross sell and promotion emails, right? Obviously, this is, these are the ones that are gonna make you money, but don't get me wrong, these relationship and content emails also make you money because again, uh, this keeps your customer engaged through the whole time that you're emailing them out and it keeps them opening your emails. So without relationship and content emails, they would never open up the upsell, cross sell and promotional emails. So you wanna make sure you have a mixture of all those three. And uh, this is super important because again, you wanna capitalize and have customers not only buy from you the initial time, you, you know, obviously the first time they come in, but you wanna be able to remarket to them not only just once or twice, but as much as you can. And that's how you really maximize your customer value, right? And so this is why understanding why your customers are your greatest asset is super important because once you narrow down like, you know, how much once you have a system in place where every, basically every single customer you bring in at one point in time buys from you uh, more than once, well, then you can start to spend more on advertising and even acquire more customers at a higher at a higher cost, right? And you can do that because you know that you have a solid backend system in place, but you need a mixture of all these things. And so I hope I didn't confuse you guys. I know it was a lot to kind of cover, but literally it's kind of hard for me to um, explain all the things I'm picking up from this book in like the easiest way or form because the way that this guy speaks is like super advanced and like it's literally hard to understand. If you guys don't know who he is, Jay Abraham, I'd look up some of his YouTube videos. That way you guys can see like how this guy even speaks and how hard it is to even understand everything. But uh, if you guys learned anything at all from this video, I'm talking about anything, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like for this boy. And if you have any questions about anything I went over, just drop them in the comments below. I'm more than willing to, you know, make another video on this, really understanding customer value and, you know, understanding how customers are such a great asset. Uh, and really focusing on increasing your Shopify store revenue without spending any more money. So if you have any questions about this video, drop it in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't already, join the VFAM, smash that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications so that you can be updated every time I upload a new video. Without that, I keep saying, I keep having like these weird like things I say at the end of the videos, but um, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.